night. Let us prepare ourselves. I feel like we've already had church, haven't you? Don't you feel that way with such great music and our band and praise people and prayer, wonderful prayer, sacred reading? If you'll um, put your hand over your eyes, I open my eyes to see the spiritual truth today. And then over your ears, I open my ears to hear the spiritual truth today. And then over your heart, and just extend out your arms. I open my heart to receive the spiritual truth today. The spiritual truth that I'm working with today is that freedom is the birthright of every living soul. Freedom is the birthright of every living soul. Freedom in finances. Freedom in your love life. Freedom in your health. Freedom in where you work. Freedom in where you live. Freedom in your family situations. All freedoms are the birthright of every living soul. Not souls who've done a good job and are rewarded with freedoms. Not souls who are rich and rewarded with freedoms. But freedom is the birthright of every living soul. That power, powerful spiritual statement is made on page one of the first chapter of the book written by our founder called Science of Mind. Science of Mind is the philosophy behind this center, the Center for Spiritual Awareness. We're a, we're a science of mind church. And as I say every single Sunday morning, to the point where Donna wishes I just would never say it again, but I'm going to keep saying it every single Sunday morning because I think it's important. We are a church with many, many, many beliefs. We're not an anything goes church. We have a belief system. Some people feel more comfortable calling it a philosophy and not a religion, and that's okay. But what we teach here, make no mistake, what we teach here are non-negotiable spiritual truths that will set you free. It changed my life, and I know it can change your life too. Today we begin a tradition that's shared in Science of Mind churches throughout the world. We speak on the, very, on the first four chapter of this book called the Science of Mind text. The chapter today that we're going to talk about is called The Thing Itself. The Thing Itself is God. Why would Ernest Holmes think up such an odd name for God? Because he wants us to divorce ourselves from any childhood notions of God. So he chose names that would make it difficult for us to fall back onto old concepts of who God is. I have a friend who's also a friend of this church who calls herself an atheist. Now, if you look throughout the whole universe, you would never find a more loving person who is committed to drawing the circle of equity to include everyone. Now, I would not call her an atheist, but as Reverend Brenda taught us last week uh, through uh, uh, principles of Kwanzaa, uh, it's important to define ourselves. I don't get to say what her definition is, although I do, and if I could, I would continue to do it. I think she and many other atheists, wait a second, I'm stuck here. I think she and many other people call themselves, label themselves atheists because they've seen the devastation that religion, in the name of God, has caused humans over the years. In the name of God, slavery was sold as part of the natural order of things. In the name of God, witches, who were actually healers, were put to a horrible death by burning. In the name of God, attempts to make gay people straight by using shock treatment was acceptable and still is, in Mike Pence's life, acceptable. If I thought God had anything to do with any of that, I'd be an atheist too. But the thing itself is not uh, a being that brings about destruction. It's an energy called love and inclusion and abundance and joy and potential that is governed by a set of principles that bring good into our lives. Carrying around childhood notions that God is sometimey, that God is wrathful and chooses some folks for blessing and other folks for misery, causes us to be afraid. And that fear makes us not place our trust, 
place our belief that this energy is for us and not against us. Ernest Holmes wanted to make sure we were free from that misinformation and we were ready to accept a God who was love itself and no respecter of persons. Now, when I say no respecter of person, I don't mean that God doesn't respect you. I mean that God doesn't pick and choose. You do. Ernest Holmes says it this way in the first chapter. It's not God that has responded to some more than others, but that some more than others have responded to God. You have all the divine potential inside of you. And the people uh, who are living lives of fulfilled bliss have reached out and touched that potential. And look, when I say people who are living lives of bliss, I don't just mean the rich and the famous. There are millions of people on this stream today. There are millions of people, uh, well, probably not millions of people on the stream, but millions of people who could be on the stream and millions of people on the planet who are living fulfilled lives as mothers and fathers and teachers and musicians and retail store uh, owners and craftspeople and workshop presenters and journalists and entrepreneurs. Why? Because they reached inside of themselves and tapped into that potential that was installed by God. Are they people of faith? every last one of them. Are they people of religion? Some are and some are not. Are they at least people who said they believed in God? Some are and some are not. But I believe that down to the very last one of them, they would say that they believed in themselves. At this church, we say that's a belief in God because we believe that we are God in form on this planet. Now, don't get this twisted. We are not all of God, but God is all of us. Ernest Holmes called his book The Science of Mind. He liked the word science because it spoke to him of principles that are no respecter of persons, principles that are learnable, repeatable, and provable. A scientific principle that demonstrates this, and, and religious science uh, teachers use this all over the world because it's so simple. It's a, a scientific principle that demonstrates how this idea that it's available to everybody works. When you mix red and blue, you will get purple, always. When a boy mixes it, purple. When a girl mixes red and blue, purple. When a gay person mixes red and blue, purple. Trans, purple. Straight, purple. When a Democrat or a Republican mixes red or blue, purple. When a Catholic mixes it, a Hindu mixes it, purple. No matter how many mistakes you've made in your life, you mix red and blue, it's going to be purple. No matter how many times you've done life right, it's going to be purple. Spiritual principle works the same way. When we cooperate with spiritual principle, also called God's laws, you will succeed. No exceptions. That nose alone should break the internet by people trying to get into one of the over 400 science of mind teachers, uh, churches that are talking about this this morning. Because every Sunday, that's what we teach. We, are, we teach what God's laws are and how to use them. Preachers of, of science of mind are the quintessential remedial teachers because you all knew this when you came to the planet. As the Yama von Zant says, you were pre-approved for bliss. You may have lost focus along the way, but you never lost your mind. You never lost your divine mind. The reason Ernest Holmes calls this the science of mind was he wanted us to know we were connected to a mind much bigger than our own. In the first chapter we're studying today, Ernest Holmes tells us that there are not two minds, but one with two names describing two different states of consciousness. Those, different, those two different names are conscious mind and subjective mind. To make it easier for myself, I call them gas gasoline mind and engine mind. The gasoline mind is that uh, mind that says, I'm taking responsibility for the thought 
I'm putting into both aspects of my mind, knowing my word will never come back to me void. And I understand that gas alone will yield me nothing but a large bill at the pump. I've got to put it into an engine in order to go anywhere. And engines won't judge the quality of your gas. It just accepts it and goes to work dependent on the quality of your gas. It will produce results. If your gas has been watered down, your engine will sputter. If your engine has been, hasn't been cleaned for a while, uh, it will, if it's carrying around a lot of built up grime, it will sputter. Are you sputtering out of self-confidence in your life? Are you sputtering out in your job? Are you sputtering out in your marriage? Are you sputtering out in any area of your life? The good news is this. There are only two places to look for repair, your gas or your engine. Where are you buying your gas? Are you pumping it from old tapes? Are you pumping it from the television? Are you pumping it from Twitter feed? Or are you pumping it from the divine mind? What shape is your engine in? You don't know? Look at your life. But there's more good news. There's no charge to repair your engine, and you don't need a loaner while it's being fixed. You simply need to check your engine's wiring. Are you wired to the source, to the ultimate mind? There is not God's mind and your mind. You were not created and set adrift. Ernest Holmes in his first chapter says the individual mind is not really individual at all. It's individualized. Ernest Holmes says, limitless power is at your disposal. You are not separate from God. You are a spark of God, an individualized spark of the thing itself. Inherent in you, deposited in a safe deposit box within you at birth, and a safe deposit box can't be broken into by anybody else, it's still in there. It can't be damaged from mistakes you've made. It's still intact. Your safety deposit box that was within you at birth is still there. And within that is a feeling of safety. Within that is an abundant attitude. Within that is self-confidence. Within that is creativity and health. Within your divine safety deposit box is the way for you to have peace in your family right now. No matter what happened at Thanksgiving, no matter what happened at Christmas, there can be peace in your family in 2021. That is your divine potential. To live it, you've got to reach in and touch it. How? By learning about spiritual principles. Take classes. We're offering three powerful classes in the next couple of weeks. Foundations, which studies this book called Science of Mind taught by a great teacher, uh, Reverend Divine. We're also teaching the power of your word. Your word can never come back to you void. So let's have power in it. You don't want words coming back to you of things you don't want. Reverend Dr. Mignon Pollard is teaching the power of your word. Karen Holt is teaching a fabulous book from Deepak Chopra called The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. Get in, take those classes. You do it all on Zoom now. Go to our website to sign up. I promise you, and you can take this to the bank, you will be a different person as a result of taking these classes. No exceptions. Pray. Pray, and by that I mean talk to the thing itself that is within you. And reread today's affirmation every single day. Your engine will repair itself and you will find an automatic shutoff valve happen every time you put water down or underfiltered gas inside of it. I want to close this morning by rereading uh, Ernest Holmes, the uh, sacred reading, which is from Ernest Holmes in this book. God is always God. No matter what our emotional storm or what our objective situation may be, no matter what you're going through right now. Are you going through divorce? Are you going through a depression from being locked up for a year? What is it that you're going through right now? God is always God. No matter what our emotional storm or what our objective situation may be. 
there's always something hidden in the inner being that has never been violated. We may stumble, but always there is that eternal voice forever whispering within our ear. That thing which causes the eternal quest, that thing which forever and ever sings. I live under a divine government and accept nature's table is always filled. The divine government is based in love and harmony with the truth of my being. I am whole, perfect, and complete right now. Let's take this message into prayer. I simply make a commitment in the year 2021 to look for God everywhere I go. In the faces of children, in the faces of elders, in the faces of activists, and in the faces of those people who are wanting the status quo to remain sane. I can find the face of God everywhere I look, in nature, in the trees, in the rain, in the ducks. I can find God everywhere. In my puppy, I can find God. There is no place where I cannot find God if I look hard enough. And I give thanks for that. For I know that is simply the first step in recognizing that the thing itself is the only thing. And I give thanks for that. I release this word into the law, and together we say, and so it is. Mm -hmm.